things are getting wild already on the GBU farm life. So this all has to go. We're so new to this. We don't know what we're doing. Today, I got my Daisy Dukes on and I'm ready to finish this. It was not without some blood and some <laughs> tears. They bit the fire out of me. I just want to get them and rehome them. There's no way we're keeping three more babies. What's up guys? Welcome back. We are in our abandoned house on our new property and we have been going back and forth. What should we do with this house? Should we demolish it and get rid of it? Should we try to fix it up and make it part of our new home? Should we get rid of the walls? So we've been going back and forth on it. What are you thinking, Matt? Yeah, we have too many options. That's the problem with us always. If we only have one or two options, we're good at picking A or B, but we have like A through Z options. The bones could be good. We could just integrate it into a workshop space. Only problem with that is that it's right at the very front of the property. So if it's a workshop space, is that really the first thing you want to see every time you come in here? We don't really know. We don't know if we even want to build here because we haven't gotten to all the land yet. So today we're going to try to figure out, shed a little bit more light on because it has opened up some, uh, I guess, a conversation in the comments. And some people say burn it down. Some people say it might be able to be used. So we're going to get a little bit deeper into it today, show a little bit more of the specs before we make our decision. Nothing has to happen right away. So let's get into it and let's try to figure out what's going to be the best possible usage for it. reason for the debate is we don't really know what we have and what we don't have here. Obviously, this is pretty solid. The outside, all the lumber is pretty much dry rotted and termites just ate all that up. There's no windows, it's just shutters. And so all the wood is pretty bad. So we know that that has to get cleaned up. But as far as the concrete structure, it seems solid. If I were to have to come in here with a sledgehammer and knock this whole thing down, I think that'd be a pretty daunting task. It seems pretty well built that way. But there are a few cracks and I'm not sure how structural that is, if that's something that's easy to fix. I don't know, I've never worked with a concrete building before, so I don't know if it's as simple as pour some stuff in there, maybe put some fiberglass mat over that, you know, little Larry Lambs was good at that fiberglass, so. What the hell are you talking about? I'm just trying to see if I could maybe We're put a fiberglass. We're not making a fiberglass home. I can't do a fiberglass patch. I don't think so. I think you can. You I'm fiberglass sure. homes? Maybe, maybe. So let's go find a couple of the cracks. Maybe I'm thinking they're worse than they actually are. So as far as the porch goes, like I said, we got to tear it down because pretty big hazard there. It's uh, definitely nothing salvageable. Maybe a little bit of the lumber on the bottom side can be saved for, I don't know, maybe firewood. So this all has to go. You can see I had to tear some of it out to try to run down the septic tank. I do believe that this house has a septic tank, but I'm not sure how old it is. So I need to get that exposed so that I can assess it, see if it's something that's going to be working, see if if we do decide to keep this building, if that's something that can be tapped into and used, or if that's something that needs to be excavated as well. Okay, and this is crack number two. This is the one that gives me a little bit of worry because it's closer at the bottom and it's wider at the top, which would make me think that because the land goes like this, that the house is cracking off and wanting to slide down the hill. Now that would obviously be a big problem if I were trying to live in this house and raise Maddie J, but also, I don't know, like let's say I wanted to keep this for a workshop space or a barn space or put some pigs in here or something like that. Is that something that's that big of a deal? I don't want an entire block wall falling over on my piglets when I'm out, you know, cutting down banana trees and stuff. All right, so it's six in the morning. It was my first day living on a farm. So I had to wake up at 6 a.m. I looked up when the sun was coming up and the sun was coming up at 6.09. So I woke up at six. I said, you know, farmers, we gotta talk like that. We like, we up before the sun, boy. But I'm not up running the backhoe or cropping or herding the steers today. The mission this morning is to rescue these baby kittens that got dropped off yesterday. 
They're very skittish, so we're trying to work. Not pleasantly dropped off. They were just dropped off and skirt and got left, so it is what it is, and we're gonna see if we can rescue them. They're a little more skittish than I thought. I was sitting really, really early this morning. I came out here and I sat next to them, but I didn't want to grab them because there's three. I don't just want to get one and freak the other two out. But there's like a labyrinth. There's a maze in there where all the bamboo and the clippings make little tunnels for them to hide in. And there's a lot more traffic here in this morning. So they are a little bit startled easily. So we're just going to put some food, keep the good, I guess keep the good vibes going and slowly build the trust. And realistically, I don't want these kittens. I just want to get them and rehome them. There's no way we're keeping three more babies. We have, we have land, we could maybe keep them. No. <laughs> it's been a day or two and Matt was able to render up the kittens in the bamboo. I don't know how you did it. How did you get them? It was not without some blood and some <laughs> tears. They bit the fire out of me. I let them... They're just kittens. How could they bite you that bad? I mean, they got little teeth. They bit me and scratched me. But what I did was I took a... I walked into the labyrinth and then they ran away a little bit. But I know they would always kind of come back out when I'd bring food. So I took the plate, paper plate, and I turned it into a tube. And I put the cat food on and I blew the cat food smell through all the little tunnels. And then I put it next to me and I kind of hid behind some bamboo and I had a stick so that when they came and started eating the wet food, I turned the plate a little bit with the stick so that their backs were to me. And then I just kind of grabbed all three of them, but I was in between things and I kind of grabbed their butt, one of them's butt, and they mainly bit me and I was bleeding. I was bleeding pretty bad actually, so I hope I don't get cat scratch fever. But it was worth it because I couldn't get no sleep that night with them poor sweet, sweet babies sleeping in the jungle. And Here is one. This is... This is the hellion. We the still group. haven't decided if we're gonna keep them though because we got a lot going on and we weren't ready for new animals. This this is Fat Boy. We named him Fat Boy. Oh shoot. <laughs> He's They're the wild. biggest one out of all of them. He has a cute little round face and he's just crazy. He likes to go everywhere. So at first they were very scared, but I think they're coming around to us. Here, show them the other two. Kristen. There was three of them and we didn't see a mom and we, for the couple days that we were there, we didn't see no mom. Kristen got all up, got them cleaned up, which was a whole debacle in itself. This Nightmare, is... Nightmare, because they don't know how to clean themselves and they don't really know how to use a litter box properly, so... This is Crazy Boy. He's crazy. And that's a Little Bit. She's the one girl, so it's... We don't call him Crazy Boy because he's fun crazy. We call him Crazy Boy because you will wash him and he just goes and lays in the litter box and completely coats himself. So you have to wash him like five times when you clean him. And he doesn't, and when you eat the food, he runs and lays in the middle of the food and completely coats his entire face, so, and body. So that's why he's crazy boy, not because he's like fun crazy, because he's a little knucklehead. So should these be our new farm cats, our outdoor farm cats, they're so cute. We would have to go get them fixed, clearly, and get them all fixed up. Yeah, it's about probably what's going to end up being a five to five hundred dollar to one thousand dollar investment in the cats. We do need farm cats. It is fate that they showed up at the first day that we showed up here on our land. I mean, you could probably tell by the way Kristen's pet and fat boy that I might be stuck with these cats, but we may still rehome them because that's a lot. You know, that's a huge increase i don't know tell me i'm all my math magicians out there is it a 75 percent increase because we got three cats additional when we used to have one or is it a 300 percent increase because we had one cat and now we're gonna yeah, have quit making this complicated help me because i don't well, understand let us know we gotta keep going with our farm on to the next projects on to the next and the good lord keeps dropping more projects in our lap <laughs> Things are getting wild already on the GBU farm life. Before we even got into the kitten debacle and we saw kittens, Matt had surprised me with my very own rooster. 
I, every time we were going to cut the grass, clear the land, we were driving back from the boat to here because we had nowhere to live. There was this rooster in this cage that was for sale at this little, I don't know, is it a pet shop or whatever? It's it like is. a pet shop for slash farm store. He just looked really majestic and every time I saw him, no one was buying him. And I was like, dang, I really want that chicken to have a good home, that rooster. So Matt secretly bought the, the rooster and now he's announced it and now we gotta go pick it up. So I don't know what we're gonna do. We can't go from one week living on the land to 50 animals in like days. Yes, we can. We yeah. don't even have anywhere for this chicken to live right now. So we're gonna have to build something. Things are just escalating. I did not see this coming. Listen, sometimes you gotta go for it. A song one time it said, you'll sit alone, you'll sit and wait forever if you wait for the right time. What are you hoping for? So I was hoping for a rooster. There was one for sale. You loved it. He came with a girlfriend and you know what? You gotta do it. In life, you know, it's like fighting. You can wait until throw the perfect punch or you can just bombs away and get with it. You can't always wait for the perfect time. So we got our chickens. It's not rocket surgery. We can figure out how to house them and we just got to do it. Rocket they're, surgery? Yeah, they're in a cage now. So if they got to stay in a cage for two more days while I build some sort of chicken coop for the time, then we're going to build We're figuring time. it out, guys, but it's escalating quickly here. All right, there's my chicken and Kristen's rooster. And I feel like my chicken is cooler. Me and Kristen still have the debate, so maybe you guys can finally settle the debate for us. We're so new to this, we don't know what we're doing. I said to put them in the back of the truck, they'd be fine. Matt said no, they belong in the truck, so. We got two chickens in the back of our truck. Two chickens in the back of the truck. I couldn't want to put them outside because one, I can lock them in in here and they're not gonna slide around. Driving them down the mountain road, I didn't want, you know, the chickens to get all scrambled. <laughs> For one, and two, it's cooler. Scrambled. Here. It's hot. You're not supposed to say that around there. Oh yeah, we can't say, sorry. But, uh, so I got the corn. I have a question for my homesteaders and my farmers out there. Um, it's a little more rural here, so my Spanish definitely is not cutting it. I will be good. I do like the immersive aspect of less people speaking English here, so I'm learning that. But we were talking about the corn, and they had solid corn pieces, and then ground up corn, the molita. So what are the benefits to each of those? Cause I certainly couldn't get that with my Spanish. I couldn't get that sorted out. And so what's the benefit to the ground versus the whole? And also he gave me pellets that I think are a little higher in protein or something for the hen that's going to be making the eggs. eggs. So hopefully, yeah, for chicken feed, obviously I'm going to be free ranging them somewhat. I'm going to make runs and there's tons of baby lizards, RIP and uh, insects and things to eat on the property. Um, so, that shouldn't be a problem, but I was just confused about it and I had really no idea what was going on with that. All right, our chickens are home now. They're in their cage. We need to make something temporary for them to live in. We're gonna do basically like a chicken run, maybe? Yep. Make a bigger cage where they can roam the grass a little more, be out of the cage and have a little more of a free run. Yep, they're gonna get to eat little baby lizards and eat some beetles and do all that. Have a little more room to breathe. And then I think if we can get that done today, we can use their cage to maybe put the kitties in or give them yeah, a little more Yeah, we need the kittens well. to get some more room where they can freely get around. Thinking I could make a pretty standard little chicken run out of uh, just bamboo. So I'm thinking we can do that. That'll go pretty fast. First, I'm going to clear this little area, level it off, and then that's it. We go into building.
So I decided in the spirit of GBU, reuse, recycle, all that stuff. Um, I, there was some wood that's salvageable from the old spot. That's not good enough to build anything new, but it's good enough to build something old. I think the chickens need a little more room and I'd like to get a little more room for those kittens as well. So we're trying to repurpose and make a little chicken coop, a temporary one out of something, you know, old materials before we can create our dream coop. Now, all my coop experts out there, do not come for me. This is, like I said, temporary. All right, so I'm in the master bedroom here and there was a bathroom to the wall and there's some decent plywood here that's held up over the years and some good nails as well. So I think that I can repurpose these two sheets of plywood. They're not gonna be light, but they are gonna be strong and they're gonna keep our chickens out of the rain. All right, so I saw a little baby rat's nest behind here. Thank God I didn't find any rats because I'm sure Kristen would make me adopt those as well. I'd have Is it really a rat's nest? Yeah, you could tell it was a baby rat's running around in there. Can you bring me one of my black clampers? I had to replace that rotten piece because it just was never going to happen. It was just not going to be part of it. So we replaced it and now I'm feeling a lot better about how it's looking. So now I got my walls up and I got my roof angle so rain don't get on my chickens. Um, and then basically there's some framing on the inside to do to make it nice for them. And then there's some, um, obviously some more wiring and some more frame out to do. But so far I'm really happy. I think we're gonna have a usable chicken coop. Let's see, I got about four fingers on the mountainside till the sun goes down. So I think we might have a usable chicken coop tonight for the babies. So it's the next day. Turns out my four fingers to the sun it must have only been two fingers. I, I wasn't quite looking at it right because I did not get it done. Some weather was coming in and I had short time to get it done. So I did not want the chickens to be overnight in that little cage anymore. I don't know anything about these chickens, so I don't know how long they've been in that cage. But for me, I couldn't stand to watch the little poor feet sitting on them wires anymore. So I said, let's get a temporary fix in. We shot up some wire on the cage just so they could have a bigger space to sleep throughout the night. And they got in there, they were kicking some leaves around. They look, they seemed a lot happier, which made us a lot happier. But either way, today I got my Daisy Dukes on and I'm ready to finish this. I don't, I think we got like 10 or 15 fingers to the sun this time. So <laughs> I think we can get it. You missed the most exciting part, guys. Our chicken, Roxanne, had her first egg with us. I don't know how many eggs she's had, but she had one egg. It was kind of small. So we hurried up and made a cardboard box for her to, what is it called? Roost. 
whatever. Brood. Brooding. Wow. We're learning. We're just learning everything. But she's not really sitting on it, so we but, were thinking about getting it hatched, but we don't know. Do we have to wait for more eggs and then she starts sitting on it so they all hatch at the same time? But we'll see. We'll see if more eggs come. Fingers crossed. I was really excited though because it felt like magic. Yeah, it was cool. She got in the cage, she relaxed a little bit, and she <laughs> had a little egg, and we were like, oh my god, baby rock sands are coming. I mean, she the eggs are definitely fertile though because Juicy be getting on her about every 15 seconds. All right, so it turns out we're bad chicken grandparents because I just looked in Roxanne's nest. Her full name is Roxanne Zaza, but she put another egg, so she's getting her clutch going. So this is just a makeshift temporary home for the next couple months till we get into our big boy chicken coop. So what I did was just trenched out because the walls I'm gonna make out of bamboo and wire are gonna be a lot easier to put together if I have a little trench for them to sit in. And I also think it'll make it safer. We do have mongooses in Puerto Rico. I don't think that's gonna be a problem because Juicy, Juicy Roosty, he tear, listen, he gonna tear up that mongoose if he comes in there. And if you don't tear him up, I'm gonna give me a rooster that will. So we ain't too worried about that, but wire going in the ground also will help it be more stable and keep some predators out. we're gonna build the outside area kind of like a miniature run or whatever it's called where they can come out from their little house and uh, I'm gonna do it six feet by four feet by I don't know somewhere right in the six feet range just so that way we can come in and interact with the chickens a little bit when we feed them because I plan on free ranging them eventually so I kind of want to get used to them following me around and this way we can let them out to eat all the lizards and all the centipedes and stuff. So as y'all can see, I built myself a bamboo workbench here. The reason I did that was to get a little bit of practice with the bamboo. See how easy it was to cut, see how easy it was to drill, see how easy, see how stable it was. It's real tough, it's real strong. But what I learned was using deck screws with it um, is that it splits really, really easily. So the way that I thought I could solve that was to get a self-tapping screw with a flat fastener or even like a roofing screw with a rubber washer. So as to not put too much pressure, they have wide threads so they grip really well and it does the pre-drilling for you, so there is no splitting. So I'll say if you're working with bamboo, get a tapper a bit, otherwise you're gonna be drilling everything. There's probably two in 
set. This one number Whoa. two here. That's number two. What does that one say? All right guys, we got the two walls assembled. Now it's time to staple on the chicken wire. It's going fast. The chickens are about to have a lot of fun in their new home. I don't know why I'm doing weird dance moves. <laughs> All right, y'all, so I think I watched too many of them. What are they called? The organic primal, primal things in the woods of the guys in Taiwan or wherever they're at, the Philippines building the primal huts. And I just had to make a bamboo integrated hinge for my door. So basically I just screwed holes in the thing, no metal, no hinges, you know, nice little pivot around enough to get in here. It wobbles a little bit, but don't worry about that for right now. Don't worry about that part. Don't worry about that for right now. We're going to worry about it later. But uh, yeah, so the door is going. Now we just got to put up wire and then a top. So, and we have to put on a top because we saw a big hawk. I thought that Puerto Rico just had these kestrels, these like little small things. And I said, ah, Juicy Roost, you could probably get with that thing. But I saw the hawk and it's like a good size hawk. It's like a hawk that I wouldn't even be comfortable letting bear run around with. So we have a predator in our midst, but we're almost done with the coop. got the chicken coop down we got the door on we do have to put a roof on because we don't want no hawks we got to put a roof on still i want to put a front wall on so their coop is completely enclosed and then i got to put a walk up so they can come out during the day eat take dirt baths be merry um safe from the hawks and then we got work. the kittens in there getting together with the chickens so they can be friends yeah because but... i want the chickens to protect or I want the cats to protect the chickens when they get older from other cats. So we'll see how it goes. It's going to be good. We got a lot of work to do still. We're having fun though, guys. The best part of this whole... I got itchies on me. This so. whole property 
I got a ton of victory stuff on me. I, the best part of this property is having little missions, little projects and getting them done together. Yes, it's good to be able to knock them out. But don't worry, don't think this is the final solution. We are gonna make a beautiful chicken coop eventually, but I jumped the gun with the chickens because I panic bought. Kristen fell in love with that chicken and for some reason I was like, oh, it's so magical. Someone will steal that up if I don't get it now. So I panic bought the chickens and then we were halfway through the day of work and the cats, the kitten showed up. So I was like, oh man, I gotta pick up my chickens in a day. I gotta get take care of these yeah, free Yeah, it went models. zero to a hundred real quick, but we're figuring it out. We're having a lot of fun and make sure you subscribe, comment down below and like this video and we'll see you guys next week. It's starting to rain on us. So we're gonna try to catch some rain so we can shower tonight. It'd be nice. So we gotta go, bye.